might be asking, why in the world have they ruined a perfectly good video? <laughs> Well, here's the reason. We're wrapping up this viral series today, and uh, we're flipping from chapter one into chapter two, and what God does in chapter two is as crazy as what just happened right there. I think you'll pick up on that as we keep going through. I'm Brian Phipps. I'm one of the pastors here. It's an honor to be with you this morning as we talk about this exciting topic. Speaking of actual booms that are about to happen here on this campus, you've already heard it mentioned, but I want to mention again the Family Fun Fest that'll be here next Sunday on this campus, right after the morning services that are going to be happening as they always do. Inside of your program is an invite card to hand out to a friend, a family in your neighborhood. Encourage them to come and to participate in this extremely fun activity. Also, there's still about 100, 150 volunteer slots that can really help bring the boom to our neighborhood. So if you aren't signed up for that already, there's information in your program about how to participate in that boom. Well, we're in week six of viral. We're going to be talking about viral glory, and the glory is the boom. But let's go back and let's ask, what's this whole viral thing about? Wave your notes at me. Let me know you got them. Thank you very much. Look at the top of the notes there. It says this, viral is the spreading of something contagious quickly from person to person. Now, a lot of you have kids that have been in school for three weeks. You know exactly what viral means because it started with somebody else's kid, then it affected your whole house. That's what Jesus wants to do with the love of God. He wants God's love to be contagious and move from person to person in a rapidly spreading way. Well, here's the big idea of the series, and you see this pointed out in these circles up here. God wants to work in me, wants to do a work in me, then he wants to work through me in the relationships of the people that are around me. And then what he'll do as we do that is he'll work beyond me. Let's review that again just to make sure we have it. He's going to work. He's going to work. And then he'll work. Yes. Chapter 1 was all about working in. Chapter 2 is going to be a little bit different. Now, here's the big idea for today. It's a long one, but we're going to go back and in it review kind of the whole series so far. So just write these in the blank as it's time. When I allow God to work in me by believing his viral truth, that was week one, walking in his viral power, that was week two, and living out his viral story, that's kind of the in me. And when I allow God to work through me by engaging in his viral mission and submitting to his viral unity, then God will work beyond me by displaying his viral glory. We're turning into chapter 2, and we're going to see how God goes beyond us if we let him, and it's going to be an awful lot of fun. Now, you might be asking, what does glory mean? We just sang a great song that Debbie wrote, you know, all glory to you, all glory to you. So we're ascribing God glory, majesty, praise for how big and awesome he is. But glory has another facet, and this is perhaps the more powerful facet to consider. Glory, as you can see in the blank there, is God's supernatural presence revealed in our natural world. It's when the supernatural, awesome, pure power of God clashes with the broken uh, world down here. There's a couple of stories in the scripture I could pull up. I'll just pull up one. Moses experienced God's glory, as did all the Israelites, around the mountain when they received the Ten Commandments. Now, Moses was up there, and he asked to see God, and God said, I can't let you see the front, but I can let you quickly see the back. And what happened when Moses was exposed to the glory, the presence of God, his face shone. His face lit up. It just messed with it. And God says, I will do that viral glory thing in my church. I'll have my supernatural presence come down and bring, are you ready, a boom. That's where we're going. Look at today's abbreviated big idea. This is the one I hope we'll all leave with. God brings the boom when his people are all in. God brings the boom when his people are all in, and it's a whole lot more exciting than what we just experienced right there. 
as cool as that was. I'm still going to be singing that song all week now as I have been the previous week. Here's what we're going to do first. We're going to see the boom. That's, that's blank number one for the first point. We're going to see the boom as it unfolded in Acts chapter 2. And then we're going to talk a little bit later about how we can begin to walk in that boom today or to continue to walk in that boom. Now, this morning my alarm clock went off at about 5.40. And it's a regular day. The coffee pot's already set to grind the coffee. So when I walk downstairs, I get my coffee. I go sit in my chair and I read my scripture and I'm enjoying that. And then I'm going on my run this morning and getting ready, praying through. Just a normal day. Well, that's what was happening to 120 people who Jesus said, go and hang out in Jerusalem and wait for the appointed time. Now, they didn't know what that meant. They were just being obedient. They were just doing what Jesus told them to do. 120 of them hanging out together (laughs) when something as funky as what just happened to you, but bigger, happened to them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this this story, just take pieces out of it, and I'm going to use the message, which is Eugene uh, Peterson's kind of version of the Bible because he says it in such plain terms. Just makes a lot of sense. And then we'll unpack it as we go. Acts 2, verses 2 through 4. You can watch it on the screen. So here they are with their little Sanka cups, chilling out, having a little Bible study. Sanka, holy cow, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? (laughs) Or was that Folgers in your cup? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Here we go. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force, and no one could tell where it came from. And it filled the whole building. And then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. That's not your typical morning. You're wondering what's in the coffee that they were drinking at that point. But here's what happened. They're hanging out, having a regular Bible study, and then without a cloud in the sky, things start shaking, a big wind starts blowing, God's Spirit drops, it says, like flames into them, and then they started speaking different languages. Now, Sutherland, every once in a while, likes to show off what little bit of Spanish that he knows. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, picture Troy up here with his guitar going and singing, and then all of a sudden, French starts coming out. Or Mandarin, or something crazy that you know isn't him. You would know, this is going to be a different kind of day. Now, you might be wondering, what in the world is it all about with the languages? Why is that going on? Hold on. That gets pretty cool to answer. We can get an illustration of why God did that by what happened this last Tuesday. This last Tuesday, people from all over the world took a pilgrimage down to Cupertino, California, to let the CEO of Apple do a reveal of the products that are coming out. People make that pilgrimage every year to see what's going on. Well, Jews from all over the world had come to Jerusalem for one of their uh, festivals. That's what was going on. Check out how God moved beyond his people and brought some boom. Says this, there were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. And when they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these redneck Galileans? Now, I know that's not in there, but that's what that means. Aren't these bumpkins from up north? We're from Jerusalem. We're the educated folk. Those are people from way up there. They haven't been to a foreign language course like we have. They're blown away. That's what they mean. What, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? So this would mess you up, right? I'm hoping it would. It messed them up. Acts 2.12, their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What in the world is going on? Now, If that happened up here on this platform right now, let's just say all of a sudden I went from English to something I don't know. It could happen. I I can't make it happen. But you would be going, what is that about? And scared to death probably. And I'm pretty sure Peter was pretty scared to death 
as well. Interestingly enough, there was a lot of people that said, I'm not going to try to mess with that God thing. I don't think that's what it is. And look what they said. One of the next things that came up. Others joked, said they're drunk on cheap wine. That explains it. They're a bunch of bozos. Now, here's Peter. Think about our bro Peter who's there. Do you remember what happened to Peter right before Jesus died on the cross? What did Peter do? He denied him. Denied him three times. Rejected his own, his own friend, his mentor, and all that. He would consider himself to be the epic fail, to put it in my son's terms. Epic fail. But after Jesus was raised from the dead, he had a little chat with him, and he said, Peter, you're in charge now, man. Feed my sheep. Go to Jerusalem and wait until the appointed time. I'm pretty sure this is that appointed time. All right? So Peter has a choice. I can either just kind of back out and just kind of keep it with the God working in me, <laughs> or I can allow God to work through me. Peter stands up and he starts to preach, and it doesn't go so well with the first few lines. He stands up and he says, Brothers, these guys aren't drunk. It's only 9 30 in the morning. Meaning, like, come back at 4 30 and it might be a different story because <laughs> it's, you know, five o'clock somewhere or whatever. I can't imagine how embarrassing that would be to start off your little speech like that. All this, I mean, God's going boom for the first time. But then the boom hits Peter. Check this out. Peter figures out that God is doing something that he talked about long ago. He quotes the book of Joel when he says, guys, here's what's happening. Remember Joel? He said, when the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. The folks that have allowed God to work in them and allows them to work through them, I'm going to pour my spirit on them and watch this. He said, that's what's happening, guys. Pay attention. Don't miss out. All of the things that the prophets have pointed to are happening right now. And then Peter gets really going. Fellow Israelites, listen carefully to these words. You pinned Jesus to the cross and killed him. That was you. That was your brokenness. That was your sinfulness. That was your plan. This guy, Jesus, that's showing up right now in the boom, died because you killed him. But God untied the death ropes and raised him up. Death was no match for him. There's no longer room for doubt. God made him master and Messiah, this Jesus whom you killed on a cross. He proclaimed the viral truth that day. And what happened? God released the boom onto them who were listening. Cut to the quick. Those who were there listening asked Peter and the other apostles, brothers, brothers, so now what do we do? I've seen the boom. Trying to sort it out. What do we do? Peter keeps going straight at him. Change your life. Turn to God and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so your sins are forgiven. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, is what's happening right now. And that day, about 3,000 took him at his word and were baptized. Peter had allowed Jesus to work in him for the last two and a half years, following him around, learning about life, learning about ministry, learning about obeying the word of God. Had the choice to let God work through him or to retreat, but he worked through him. Now, Watch this. You might be asking, what's with the languages thing? There were people from Rome. There were people from Egypt. There were people from the east who had all gathered there. And they heard the viral truth in their own language. They were cut to the quick and they were changed. And then they went back home and started planting churches in their own cities. Now, if you think about it, that's a crazy smart God. 
He could have said, let's just start here and spread little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. But God said, no, 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 no. I can work beyond my people if they'll just work, let me work through them. And he did. They prophesied. They talked. Rome got a new church. Colossae got a new church. Churches all over the world because these people were faithful with the work God gave them to do right there in through, beyond. We've seen the boom. Now let's just pull a couple of ideas out of it. One is this. Fill us in the blank. God's glory will build up God's church every time. 3,000 people added that day. Churches started around the world in a few hours. Wow. That's boom. That's why it's 2.8 billion or whatever they've been saying the last few weeks. But here's perhaps even the more powerful idea. You ready for this? God's glory builds up God's people. God's glory builds up God's people. Consider Peter in this story. Epic fail, thinking there's no way in the world God could use me to stand up and be the catalyst in this situation. But he knew something different. He knew that he had been commanded by Jesus to go all in, and he did. You know what? There's a bunch of amazing people in this world, just amazing, talented, visionary, and we just talked about Apple. Steve Jobs has gone down to be one of the most amazing and mean people in the history of the world, right? You read his story and you go, how does a guy have all that? Well, let me tell you something, and perhaps if you don't leave with anything else, leave with this. There's no greater individual on this planet that's bigger than God and one of his disciples. There is no more powerful individual on the planet than one believer filled with the presence of God. Nobody else can have God show up and do his thing through them in a way that we, as the followers of God, can. St. Irenaeus said it in a really cool way. He said, the glory of God is man fully alive. The glory of God, the boom of God, God showing up on this planet and doing crazy stuff is man and woman absolutely fully alive. A more recent philosopher that's not so great as St. Irenaeus said it this way, the glory of man is God fully alive in them. Look at that guy, Zephipster, that's, yeah. (laughs) But here's what I've seen. I have seen the glory of men and women, the impact, the boom of men and women as they've allowed God to get bigger and them to get smaller. You know what John the Baptist said, right? He must increase and I must decrease and glory and boom happens. And if you don't believe me, look at this verse in 2 Thessalonians. He called you to this through our gospel. Why? That you might share in the boom of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you might share in the glory. Not that you might share in heaven, that you might share in heaven revealed right here on earth. You catching that? You're the boom. He wants to do the boom through you. So here's point two. Be the boom. Just be the boom. How? Look at this verse. I love this verse. Christ in you, the hope of boom. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of boom. Here is what I want to spend the next two minutes doing. I'm going to clear a spot right off here, and I'm going to start stomping. Stop saying no for God. Stop saying no for God. For too long, we have used excuse after excuse after excuse to say, no, God, you can't do this in me. And we need to be done with that. Let me have, take a couple of examples. One, you can't, you can't look at your past failure and say that I'm disqualified from being used from God. If you could say that, then so could Peter. And so could every individual that's ever followed him since the day he was here. And if you're looking at your past screw-ups and your past mess-ups and you're saying God could never use me, stop saying no for God. 
God wants to say yes in you. Stop saying no for him. Please. He wants to bring boom through you. If you're introverted, one, I am sorry for who I am in your world. These loud people just mess with the big introverts. I know that. I can't help it. But a lot of people I know say, I'm introverted. I'll never be a loud mouth like you guys up on the stage. I'll never be all whatever. Can I just tell you a moment that I had on this planet that was one of the top three, if not the single top, most powerful God moments in my life? The story was of a missionary named David. And when I was in my first church after seminary, associate pastor, we would have mission conferences come by every year, and we'd invite missionaries from overseas to come and, and to share the stories of what God's doing in their life. This guy's named David. is from Pakistan, and he was scared to death to be up there. He didn't want to talk. He was scared, and he was sitting behind that little lectern pulpit. I could see him because I was right behind him. The poor guy's legs were shaking. He wasn't talking any louder than this. Scared to death, just fumbling through his words. But I have never felt the presence of God so powerful in a single individual in my life. I mean, there was a sense of, ugh, the guy's out there doing it day after day, and he was telling stories of how indigenous people were coming to Christ and the boom that was happening through him. And I thought, I want some of that. Couldn't believe it. Past is no reason to disqualify yourself or say no to God. Introversion is no reason to disqualify yourself and say no for God, period. Psalm 139 says, you were knit together in your mother's womb by a master's hand. And he knew exactly the work that he was doing. And he's allowed every day of your life to continue to shape who you are today. So past, present, future is all written by him. Just say yes to allowing him to bring the boom in your life. We must allow God's spirit to grow in our lives. Stop saying no for God and start allowing God's spirit to grow in your life. What do you mean grow, Phipps? What does that look like? Well, look at the next verse in 2 Corinthians 3. We, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's what? We all reflect the Lord's glory. His glory is in us as Jesus is in us. And we're being transformed incrementally, little bit by little bit, into his likeness with what? Ever increasing glory. Now it may be true, your little light is only that big right now. But that's okay. There are, there are activities that you could be a part of. There are practices and disciplines that you can engage in right now. And one step after another, allow that glory to become a raging fire. From within you, it's in you, and then it'll become through you, and then God will just do boom, right? It can happen for all of us. Practically, how does this happen? I'm going to just give you a quick summary of how the Holy Spirit changes us. One, the fruit of the Spirit changes our character. The fruit of the Spirit changes our character. We just finished a whole series this summer called Big Character on the Fruit of the Spirit, how, to be, how God wants to increase his presence inside of our lives and make us more loving, more peaceful, more gentle, more kind, more all the other fruit of the Spirit. We can do that. God wants to do that in us. He wants to give us Jesus' character, and it's the fruit of the Spirit that changes our character. It's the gifts of the Spirit that help us to understand and develop our calling. The gifts of the Spirit reveal our calling. What does that mean? Ephesians 2.10 says that when you were created anew in Christ Jesus, he empowered you with certain gifts to do the good works that he created for you to do long ago. Everybody has a job description in the church, everyone. Every Christ follower gets to participate, and God needs us to participate. He's not only wanting to change your character, he's wanting to give you a role to play, and as you play that role and you see the boom that God starts to do through you as you engage that role. You're inspired to just keep growing and keep growing and keep growing and let that boom just get bigger and bigger and bigger for the rest of your life. 
Write this in the blank. Character times calling equals boom. You allow God to make you into a more godly man or woman. You bring peace into your home because your character is changing. You start to engage in an activity, changing the community, doing whatever it is, and God's working through you and doing crazy things. You get to lay your head down at night going, how was that cool day? That sounded really, really menacing, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I've seen so many people leave a life of mediocrity and boredom and surviving from day to day because they just simply start saying no for God and said, if the Spirit will work in me, I'll let him. And it's kind of fun, these guys that are in groups that I've been a part of, they start to lean into the Spirit of God and God starts to change them. Those wives come to me and say, I don't know what you're doing with my husband, but don't stop. He needs more and more and more. And I'm seeing them take the mantle of this viral mission of Jesus and carry it further, and God's boom just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me give an example of what this looks like. One of my buddies here, he's in a leader's made group with me right now. His name's Mike Crosby. He's a dude that says kapow in the video a while back for those of you who were here to see that. Crosby, um, he'll tell you, he's been around a while. He's up in... Uh, Bonner Springs and has been his whole life and the on fire Christ life he's living right now was not exactly the same that he was living when he was in high school. It has a reputation for all of his folks up in the dot for being very different today than he was back then. Well, he's up at the Tiblo days a few weeks ago. Shout out for Tiblo days for all of you in the dot, especially up there at the Speedway. Rock on up there. Love what's going on. So Mike is at the Tiblo days, and he sees two old buddies and another friend, two, the two guys, not connected to Christ in his church and having some struggles in life, and one guy who's just a missionary looking for a church to get boomed in, Right? So Mike invites all these guys to come to his fire, and they do the next night, a fireside, a small group of men that meet around a fire. They come to the fire, and the two guys that were not connected to Christ at that point were father and son. The father starts sharing early on in the fire that, that he's struggling, asks for help. And one of the other guys that's been at the fire is a previous inmate up at Lansing who's there. God's got a hold of his life, changing him, leading him in a ministry. It's awesome. He looks over and asks that guy, uh, do you think it's time that you actually submit to the Lordship of Christ and let him start working in you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom, right? <laughs> Everybody else goes, oh, I need to do it right now. <laughs> and he said, yes. And they put their hands on him, and they started praying for him. Everybody's crying. It's nothing better than seeing a bunch of men just, <laughs> that was awesome, man. And so they're, they're having this moment with each other. And then the other guy from Tiblo days that's there, that's the missionary looking for something to do, says, hey, we're not done. Anybody else need to give their life to Christ tonight? Or anybody else have an issue they've got to work through? The son of the man that just gave his life to Christ said, I need to start sharing. He starts sharing. And then they asked him the same question. He gives his life to Christ. Two in one night, God is doing a work in and through Mike Crosby and the other guys that are there. Crazy stuff, right? All right, that's fun. Go ahead and clap. That's good. That's God. But <laughs> here's the in, here's the through. We've just seen it. Watch the beyond. The poor guy, the son is going, I don't know what in the world my wife is going to think about this new commitment I've just made. And I've seen that happen with a lot of guys. I just don't know what's going to happen when I show up. The, the, the gal says, okay, I'll go and I'll, I'll, I'll go to Westside with you this weekend. And we'll just check it out. She comes. Oh, gosh, this is so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. This is insanely cool, right? I mean, it's cool. She comes. She's down here. She's listening to all this. One of the first things that she sees is the video that we showed last week, the all-in video of the ministry that we have down in KCK. Lisa Kerwin was kind of narrating that thing. This woman, the wife, is a teacher down in KCK. And it's her kids in the video. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Here comes the, Boom. here comes the, Boom. that's the stuff we're talking about. God will do it. That's nuts, isn't it? And so she starts asking, we need to get into one of those host groups. And I'm going, yeah, boom, baby. That's exactly what you need to do. 
Listen, character and calling. It's not a mystery. It's not a mystery that you go, how do I figure that out? Everything we do at Westside is about developing character and calling. Everything we do, all the groups, all you need to do to take a step toward advancing character and calling is grab one of those host groups. There are people that have been insane enough to step out of their comfort zone and welcome wacky people into their home. And that's, you're the wacky people, and they're out there in the lobby after this service. And I encourage you, if you're not in a group yet, and you don't have that opportunity to watch God start working a little extra crazy character and calling in your life, go out there and grab one of those folks. It's a four-week series that starts next week called Devoted. It's going to tie in with the weekend messages. It's four weeks. If you can't stand the people, you can bail on them after and nobody's feelings are hurt, okay? Just go out there and make that commitment. Also, after all the services today, we'll be leading a Get Connected, and Get Connected is how we paint a, We just paint a picture in that 90 minutes of the fully alive life that Jesus wants you to have and how West Side can help you get there. Listen, if you've been around West Side for a long time and not been to Get Connected, you did everything West Side or 101, it's different. Come and check it out and see how character and calling can unleash the boom at West Side like you've never, ever seen before. You know what I know Jesus wants? I know Jesus wants everyone to be able to say what he said at the end of his time. He says this, I've brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. I brought you boom, Jesus. I brought you boom, Father, by just completing the work you gave me to do. I let him work in me. I let him work through me, and then I trust him to work beyond me. So let the boom begin in you today. Let the boom begin in you today. God bless you, friends. See you next time. <clears throat>